Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur Media and Yelp. My name is Sean Walsh, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. I want to have a special shout out to Toast. Thank you for believing in this project. Toast is our primary point of sale partner at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. Toast is also conveniently located in this restaurant, but more importantly, in life, in the restaurant business and in the creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. Today, we have a very special guest. We have Javier Correa, owner of Sombreros Mexican Restaurant, 16 restaurants in San Diego. We are here in El Cajon. Javier, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Always love connecting with you. I mean, it's funny from like one email to a couple phone calls. <laughs> be there. careful if you email me. Yeah, be careful. Like, man. <laughs> you might end up on a show. <laughs> Wait, you have 16 restaurants, Sombreros? Amazing. Yeah. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank so you. The, our favorite question that we start the show with is, it's a random question. Where in the world is your favorite stadium? stage or venue stadium stage or venue oh actually favorite stadium i've been to it has to be cowboy stadium cowboy when, I, when stadium. I went there to see the chargers okay man i was on the on the small screen and i was impressed i wasn't even <laughs> front of the big screen so yeah that was probably that was a that was a fun fun trip and i and and second is definitely new orleans okay yeah, so so yeah. we're going to go to at&t stadium cowboy stadium jerry's world and we're going to convince entrepreneur convince toast convince yelp that we're going to put on this incredible hospitality conference where the best people, the people that listen to this show, just this rock store lineup. And we're gonna have Sombrero Mexican restaurant. Yeah. We're gonna have Javier take the middle of the field. And I'm gonna give you two minutes to tell us your story, your elevator pitch. Everyone needs an elevator pitch. Even when you're a restaurant owner and an entrepreneur, we all need to know how to sell our story. So give us a Sombrero story, two minutes, go. Okay, well, yeah, I'm Javier Correa Jr. Um, I'm the CEO for Sombrero Mexican food. I'm a third generation entrepreneur. Um, and uh, restaurant tour, and we, uh, my grandpa started the business back in the 60s. He had a few locations, got out of it. My dad reopened in 1984 um, as the quick service model that we are today with the counter. Back, back in the day, it was mom and pop sit down. So, you know, fast forward, we serve San Diego style Mexican food. Um, traveling the country, Mexican food's a, a broad spectrum. So yes. when we say San Diego style Mexican food, it has a lot of meaning, especially being from San Diego. We're so spoiled with what it is, the taco shops. There's yep hundreds if not thousands of taco shops here. So we do San Diego style Mexican food. We like to, um, you know, coin that because it's different. You know, it's, you're gonna see some things that are different, but um, for, for example, we have the authentic stuff. We have chile rellenos, enchiladas, tostadas, the basics, and then we put French fries in a burrito. So oh. as you can see right here, two of our top sellers, we got the carne asada fries, and then obviously the World Taco Supreme. Um, these are top, within the top five. I mean, carne asada and then Second is wrap it up in a tortilla. You got the Cali burrito and then you got the carne asada burrito. So yeah, these are main staples. Um, yeah, we've been doing it for, we just, this month we celebrated 38 years. And um, amazing, 38 yeah, it's been years, a, It's been a heck of a journey, <laughs> heck of a journey. So, and we're still learning every day, every week. So it's, um, no, it's fun. We enjoy what we do. So I'm gonna bring you back in time. And uh, you know, I grew up here in San Diego, very fortunate my grandfather paid for me to go to private school. I went to the Bishop School in La Jolla. And I remember being a young kid and Garrett, one of my best men, um, Joey, another one, and Jake coming to me and telling me about punk rock. And I'm like, what's punk rock? I don't know what you're talking about. And they go, you got to get this CD. It's Dude Ranch. I get this CD and it's Blink-182. Fast forward, we're here. You're sitting with a Blink-182 <laughs> San Diego Sombrero Mexican restaurant. I mean, I get chills thinking about the meaning of the song, Josie the lyrics to the song, the fact that Blink-182, the band's connection to growing up in San Diego, and they were a small band at that point. Sure. You know, they hadn't blown up on a global scale. But I mean, every restaurant owner, we dream of getting content. You know, I dreamed of having, you know, sports radio, having Scott Kaplan, Mighty 1090, talk about our restaurant, but not in a way that was an advertisement. We wanted to be part of the show. Sure. You've literally become a lyric into a song. Bring us back to where, how old were you when this happened and kind of where was the restaurants? And give us the band story. Yeah, so Blink-182, they uh, frequented our Carmel Mountain location, which is, so they went to Poway High School and, um, and the Carmel Mountain location was back then, it wasn't as developed as much around it. So yeah. the three high schools, uh, Carmel, uh, Mount Carmel, uh, Rancho Bernardo and Poway High School, everyone kind of uh, con uh, connected at Sombrero. So they were regular, they were just a bunch of high school kids that would show up <laughs> at Sombrero's and get a burrito. Yeah. They were, and 
And how do we do it? Honestly, it's as simple as making a good bean and cheese burrito, and yeah. that's what they love. So it all, you know, it's this worldwide thing, but what does it come down to? Just the good food, and that's, that's the kind of the crazy thing. It's like how far, you know, um, being consistent and um, just doing what you do, just executing from a simple level, a bean and cheese burrito. And look, it literally, that, them liking a bean and cheese burrito, has connected with them, you know, it's nostalgic for them. Yep. And they grew up with it and then they, they still come and visit the Carl Mountain store. Um, yeah, it's just been a, it's been a crazy ride. And um, it all started with just making a good bean and cheese what burrito. What does it say on the back of your shirt? Show, so, the, show the camera. So, for, so those, for those of you that are listening on podcast, you gotta go to entrepreneur.com so you can see the video. But this says, she brings me Mexican food from Sombrero just because. Yep. <laughs> so tell us about the shirt drop. Yeah, so th this was in uh, last month in May. They, they were celebrating their 30th anniversary. So they, they contacted us and said they wanted to do a collaboration for the 30th anniversary. Yep. They sold them online. They sold out in 20 minutes. <laughs> um, I wasn't, you know, they sent me this down. Like, Heck yeah, that looks awesome. Let's do it. I didn't realize it was going to sell out that fast. Yep. And we got some shirts. We got them for all our staff. So our staff, it's their weekend shirt. So they either Saturday or Sunday, they're rocking yep. the Blink shirt. So just a fun thing. And um, I can't believe it's been 30 years. Um, for their history. So we're just happy to be partnering with them on that. And um, just being associated with them is definitely an honor. And I mean, we're proud of where they went, but yeah. vice versa, we're happy to, you know, be able to still connect with one another after all these years. So. Well, I mean, what, what I love about it is that every restaurant owner, the reason why we do this show is every restaurant has influence. Like you can't be in the restaurant business and not have influence. And we talk a lot about social media influence, about building an online profile, about doing things differently because you can have an amplified effect. But when you do just the basics and you do the things the best way, the right way, and you put in quality ingredients and you take care of your community, you can have that amplified effect where somebody famous could come to your restaurant. Somebody could write a song literally about your restaurant. It's super exciting for me, but can you bring me back to the family business? Because we have a lot of restaurant owners that listen to this show and I grew up in the business. I actually hated busting tables and washing dishes. And I didn't think that I would be in a place where I'm gonna be a barbecue media company with entrepreneur.com, yet here we are. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, there's nothing else I'd rather do. Tell us about your journey, about really buying in, growing up in the business. And, and when did you realize that this is something that you loved it? Yeah, so, I mean, in some boroughs is just, I mean, again, this is our, uh, we just celebrated um, 38 years. So, and when I look back, it's like, like we say, there's so much goes on in any given restaurant and yes. we have so many we have multiple locations so every day is just jam-packed with con you want to call it content, content. We, we get content every <laughs> we day get content for days so <laughs> that being said is like you know when you stop and like reflect like oh how the heck did we get here right yeah and it's been you know ups and downs and all over the place but really the big step is you know every generation has to make kind of their shift yes. so my dad was really good because my, my grandparents they they're, they they uh, immigrated here from mexico so they brought that work ethic, right? Yeah. Very simple, right? So they, if you weren't family, you didn't work. So what happened? When, that's a pretty hard to scale model. So, <laughs> so you know, very hard to but scale. my dad learned the work ethic and he grew up in the business since he was a small kid. And um, so they got out of the restaurant business. My dad went and got a drafting degree and um, he educated, he learned something new. And then uh, what he did is he ultimately decided to open Sombrero because he couldn't get a job and as a, and, and um, but what he did is he, he, he did it different. He always said, look, I'm going to, I'm going to run this business, but I'm not going to be a slave to my business. So yeah. what do you do? You, you have employees that you trust and you train them, you develop them. And then that's, that was a, a big shift between the two, two generations and he carried that for years. I mean, and he, he my dad has a ton of drive. He, um, he, uh, you know, he's a, he's, you know, a, the model image of an entrepreneur. So, sure. and he still does it with all kinds of projects too. But it's uh, <laughs> But then, or, so my, my shift is, you know, I grew up, I started working in the restaurant when I was, since I was 10 years old. Um, and then probably when I was about 18 years old, I realized, man, we need to get these systems going. And yeah. so that's when we started evolving and we just been evolving the systems. And, and, but honestly, I've been working in the restaurant since I was 10. I've always been passionate about it. I like the fast pace, the multitask, working with people. Um, I, I just had a passion for it. And then when you, I love getting into the weeds with like the numbers, the systems and all yes. that. And when you could create it and that's, that's what, that's what I still do today. So it's, yeah, it's just been a big evolution. And even the last five years, I mean, bringing in toast, we brought them in on a pilot in 2017 and man, that's just that fast tracked a bunch of stuff we were trying to do. Cause we, we did a bunch of stuff prior to that, but 
it really, really helped. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit more. It's one of the things we obviously partner with Toast. Toast believes in this project. They're the title sponsor of this show. But we talk about digital hospitality, understanding yep. that restaurant owners, we need to think differently, evolve differently. And what's super exciting for me is to see a leader like you in a category like Mexican restaurants and taco shops adopting technology to really give hospitality in a way that hasn't been done before. Because we think, oh, I just want to get the tacos out, I'm going to get the, the food out. But when you have something like toast and you can do online ordering and you can do gift cards and you can do loyalty, you can really take care of a customer in a way that we've never been able to do in the past. For sure. Yeah, it's, um, so we had a bunch of different, I mean, we started with obviously the cash register. <laughs> then we did the, the big move was the Samsung SPS 1000. Yeah. Great system, man. It was good to take orders. And we even had like a polling. So again, bringing in the, okay, where can I get the data? Data yes. is so important, you know, and, and understanding what to do with it. And then uh, we tried a couple systems and then we went to Toast. Um, but even, even within Toast, that was an evolution. Put our menu in, we totally scrapped that menu because we had to do a single source menu. So that was probably about a year and a half ago, we did a single source menu. Yep. And once you had that, um, it, it really opened up all the all the avenues. So now we, you know, when we update something in Toast, it pushes out to all these different things and it's instant, you know, you're not managing multiple databases and all that. So it, that it's just kind of fast tracked it. And then now we're connecting all kinds of other things. And it's just cool to see the evolution. Like I talked about our tech stack. Yes. So I really mapped that out. Where's the tech stack? Can we show? <laughs> so for those of you watching on video, if you're listening on podcast, you, we'll, we'll put a link in there so you can get the tech stack is very important, and especially now in 2022, if you're a restaurant owner or if you work in a restaurant and you're part of a restaurant group, do the take the take the time to do the homework. It's something that I had to do when I went to go present at the National Restaurant Association. I was presenting on a tech stack, and I'm like, well, what do we use? Exactly. Like, front of the house, back of the house, marketing, all of these different things that we're using. Once you do the work, then you can start to see how does it all integrate with one another. For Tell sure. me about your tech stack. Yeah, so, I mean, again, well, even within Toast, we started in 2017. Um, we didn't uh, like, and, and it was kind of basic because it was yeah. just converting to the traditional POS system. And then you could, you're kind of learning the system. And again, like I said, redoing the whole menu. Because so what we were running is a, a POS menu and an online menu. Yeah. But now you have double data. Yeah. And then so we had to go redo all the menu. And then once we set that up, now it uh, fast tracked like you know like we use Chali for our third party aggregator. Yep. Um, so what that, what that does is it reads the menu from toast, pushes it out and it's just, that's a game changer cause you don't have all these tablets dinging yep. and all that. So, um, but yeah, so kind of working through that, like you said, you got to map it out, take the time, do it. Even if it's manual by paper, you could actually see what am I actually doing? Cause you forget like, Oh yeah, we do have this. And then even since our last meeting a week ago, <laughs> I was like, I never thought about the website. You know, you just think of it as this kind of fixed yeah. thing. But it's it's not. There's opportunity to connect it. We were talking to like it's your pop e menu. It's and, your e-commerce. Yeah, yeah so pop menu is a sponsor of the show. I mean, it's so. The crazy thing for me is we have been hosting a show called Digital Hospitality. Now we host a show called Restaurant Influencers. I'm interviewing tech CEOs. I'm working with product engineers. Like the amount of time and effort that we spend, and yet I still know nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I exactly. still have to go and ask questions, and I have to lean on experts. And the more that I do that, though, the more that you start to understand the entire picture and the entire picture and what we try to teach people on storytelling and through technology is, you know, I interviewed Noah Glass, the CEO of, of Olo and Olo is an online ordering platform for enterprise restaurants. We're talking about all the biggest chains. If, if it's the five guys, the cheesecake factories, the Jamba Juice, Olo powers their online ordering. And what he said was the smartphone is the first place where content, communication, and commerce have come together in one place. And I think for us, the most important thing as restaurant owners is we figure out, if I want rolled tacos, if I want a carne asada burrito, if I want enchiladas, and I tell Siri or I tell Alexa, or I wanna order it on TikTok, or I wanna order it on Instagram, you and I, we have to figure out with our tech partners, how can we make that happen? Yeah. How do we make that frictionless experience so that we can get great Mexican food? And I mean, I have small kids. I don't want to have to go out sometimes to the restaurant. Sometimes it's too late. You know, we're at the beach, whatever. We're coming back home and I need something quick, but I want good food, yeah. you know, and what you guys do is you make great food. It's how do we use technology to deliver that great food? For sure.
And now a quick break from restaurant influencers to talk about our newest sponsor, Pop Menu. Huge fans of what Pop Menu are doing. We got to spend a lot of time with them at the National Restaurant Association in Chicago, spending time with the team to learn about all the digital hospitality tools that their company offers. Restaurants have been hit hard over the last few years, which means restaurant owners and staff have been working harder than ever. Trying to meet the demands of in-person hospitality can be very demanding which is why we recommend Pop Menu Answering. Pop Menu Answering turns every restaurant phone call into an opportunity. It uses artificial intelligence to answer simple questions that are hanging up your phone lines, like, can I make a reservation? Where are you located? Do you still have ribs? And over 50% of restaurant guests are happy to have their questions answered by an automated system. Within the Pop Menu platform, you can customize answers for your restaurant, choose the voice your guest hears, which we recommend is your voice, and even send follow-up links via text message. Pop Menu Answering picks up your phone 24-7, 365 days out of the year, allowing you and your team to focus on what matters most. Prevent lost customers and impress your guests with Pop Menu Answering. For a limited time, our listeners get $100 off your first month plus lock in one unchanging monthly rate at popmenu.com slash influencers. Go now to get $100 off your first month and learn more about Pop Menu's full collection of tools at popmenu.com slash influencers. And now back to the show. Well, even me, like I, in my own restaurants, like I told you before, I'm like, when I want food, instead of calling it in and tying up one of my cashiers, <laughs> I'll do it online. Cause I know it's going to go, yes. that's the most efficient way to do Correct. it. So, I mean, I'm using it within my own restaurant. Yep. It's like, it's just an efficient way to do it. And um, yeah, and that's really what the restaurant business is all about. I have a coach I work with and he, he says, Javier, we're, we're always in a, uh, we're in a mode of constant, continuous improvement. So our goal is to always find the constraints relative to how we meet the needs of the customer and our team yeah so basically you want to make it easy for everyone the customers and your staff too you know yeah. so that which is your number one customer you know how do you make these guys job easier that's one of the biggest things i do because especially now with staff issues okay what can i where's the constraint how can i make it easier and that's just that just whole philosophies then you know once you kind of get in that mode then you can say okay here's the constraints and then you map it out like this i told you like all these bubbles right all the different technologies so basically wherever there's a gap that's an opportunity to connect because everything should be touching um, one another. So it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. So it's one, of, one of my biggest <laughs> failures being an entrepreneur and a restaurant owner was not seeking for more help from people who were smarter than me or who had been in the places that I wanted to be. At what point did you realize you needed to hire a coach? Um, yeah, I've, uh, it's, it's been a few years now, but, um, it, and I had kind of coaches per se with um, different- Mentors? mentors and just just different strategic partners you yeah. work with whether it's bookkeepers marketing teams different stuff like that but then i i got a real specific coach a few years back and it's just it's just game changer accountability yeah and you know what i call it is uh the biggest thing for me is creating a cadence yeah so like what i do is like in the restaurant business the best thing you can do because we do the kind of we do the same thing over and over right yep so it's uh how do you do it consistently and keep going so you got to create a cadence. You know, I have stuff I do with my my managers every week, yep. my admin team, um, and then we do like a week, a month, a monthly leadership meeting, and then my coach. I meet with them every two weeks, and it kind of gives me a, a. I take all these ideas, I can them all up, and then I present them, get his feedback. So it's real. Um, it's um, yeah, just creating that cadence is like that, that's what it's helped me the most. Is like you have an accountability yep. person, and it's consistent. You're consistently going through everything and yeah it's it's been a game changer i mean i think one of the things when you and i first met you reached out because you had heard a piece of content and we always tell people stay curious get involved ask for help like you actually reached out because of a piece of content and we met and one of the things that impressed me the most was you're like i have 16 restaurants and barrel restaurant like iconic brand here in san diego i'm like so what what's your next plan how are you expanding you're like we're not expanding like, what are you talking about? Why did, why are you not expanding? Um, I think, uh, well, that, that's an interesting, expansion is a di different mindset because a lot of people think, oh, I need to open up more restaurants. <laughs> so in my mind, we are expanding, but we're expanding within our Perfect. four walls. Yes. So what I've been drilling into is, well, one, we have this brand. I mean, taco shops in general, it's like- It's you, one taco shop. But it's, there's, yeah, exactly. It's a right. very mom and pop because very mom and pop. down to the recipes, yep. very handcrafted. Yep. It's it's amazing the food that we produce with such simple equipment, right? Yes. 
And then second, you go into a taco shop, what is it? Huge menu. Huge menu. So now you compare it to these brands that really scale. You know, so I've been consolidating that. Again, fixing things and, um, you know, finding constraints in the back and simplifying it. And yep. we're, we're there. But, but, but what we've, what we've been util, uh, realizing is there's so much opportunity within our four walls. Yes. So we'll, we will scale, don't, don't get me wrong. Yep. But it, we're, we've, we've had so many improvements these past few years and, it, and I see what we're doing within our four walls. Yep. It's like, when we scale, how does that exactly look? Because even within our 16 stores, I mean, I have stores that do six times the sales of another store in the same wow. week. Well, yeah, one's in a, a small, in a gas station. Yep. The other one's a 24 hour drive through. So even there, there's like, we're really di two different companies within our own company. So it's kind of pinpointing um, kind of, what is that scale model? Sure. Does it look like that or that, you know, like, so, so you gotta be crazy because, uh, crazy, uh, careful because a lot of people do scale, you know, yes. what goes up fast could come down fast too, if you don't have everything buttoned up. So yeah. we're cognizant of that, but we are seeing expansion within our four walls. So that that's what I'm excited about, so. I think for, for me, it's very powerful because we're always trying to simplify. The more that we can simplify, the easier it is to scale. And I think as a restaurant owner, it's so hard to do that. And for 15 years, literally, we've gotten where we're finally removing menu items. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. And once you figure out what do you do best, and you don't need to take care of everyone in the village. Yeah. We want to take it, that's a problem. Yes. It's a dichotomy, it's, it's literally these two opposing forces. Like, we're in hospitality, we wanna, oh, you, oh, this is what you want? You want a hamburger? Well, you can make a hamburger, you have, you have a yeah. flat top, <laughs> you can get some ground beef, you can make a hamburger. But half these people in the village want hamburgers. Well, our job is to know, stay consistent with what do we do, and how do we make better roll tacos, how do we make more roll tacos, yeah. right? Yeah. How do we get more tacos and more people? Just Correct. like the, the burrito. Remember, I was telling you, we yeah. were doing burritos to all the high schools here, yep. the local high school. So that's a whole nother element, the wholesale side of it. Like, that's a whole nother component. I'm like, man, that's a whole nother business within the business. It's an amazing side. But yeah. it, that's the thing that we love talking about because it allows restaurant owners to think beyond a standard point profit and loss statement. Mm -hmm. Once you start getting into wholesale, once you start to get into consumer packaged goods, what else can we do to get our recipes and the love and our craft to more people in a different way on yep. their terms, not on our terms. Well, yeah, you just look at my, we had a, a, my coach, we talked about this because he comes from, he worked with a few national brands. So, and he always goes, look, it's where do people eat food? Yeah. They, they eat food in a restaurant, they eat food in their car, yep. they eat food at home. You know, they go buy it from the grocery store. They, you know, like, so once you kind of look at that bubble and understand those bubbles, you could see okay, how can I get into those circles? What are the most efficient ways to do it? Which makes sense, what, what don't? And then, yeah, it's, um, it's it, it, there's so many opportunities, you know? And then once you, so for us, even here, even just the most basic, dine-in, take-out, drive-through, each one of those, there's a full strategy that goes into each one of them that you yes. have to, like you have to leverage different technology for the drive-through, for your dine-in to go, right? Just those three. Now you put in delivery, third-party delivery, um, uh, phone orders, online, you know, it's just, and you can, I mean, you could just go on and on. You figure out how to leverage it, how to connect people with it, and ultimately meet the needs of the customer. Like, what you yes. got to connect with how they want to connect with you, and everyone's different. So, yeah, it's, it's fun, but, but it's a, it can get overwhelming. So every, every week on Wednesday and Friday, we do a Clubhouse call at 10 a.m. Um, if you listen to the show, please join us on Clubhouse. It's an audio app. You can download it. Uh, we have people from all over the globe. Javier has been kind enough to join us with his expertise. We have restaurant owners, marketing professionals, sales professionals. But we, we really want to have a place where you can not just listen to the content. You know, we say stay curious. You wouldn't be listening to this. You wouldn't be watching this. You wouldn't be reading this if you weren't curious. But then you actually have to do something about it. So come onto the Clubhouse app, raise your hand, get on stage, share your story. You never know, you might end up, we might end up to be at your restaurant no matter yeah. where you are in the globe. It's very important for us. Tell us, um, so one thing I want to do is I want to give a shout out and my shout out goes to Stover. Stover is the behind the scenes. He's helped us launch this show. We produced 50 episodes that never actually aired just in order to pitch entrepreneurs. So a lot of blood, sweat and tears have happened to get us to be here in this restaurant today in El Cajon. But Stover's my shout out. Who is somebody that you haven't been able to recognize for the work that they've put in for your brand? Um. Well, it, it, honestly, it just goes right back to my team. I mean, yeah. like they show up is there every a person, day. Person, one oh. person. I want one shout out. 
The per this is your chance. This is your opportunity. Yeah, the big one is probably my operations manager, Arturo. Arturo? Yeah. All right, Arturo. Arturo. There you go on entrepreneur.com. <laughs> that's how you. That's how it goes down. What did Arturo do? I mean, he just shows up every day. He keeps. He's my operations manager. Yeah. He, he he owns it. He shows up and gets it done every day. Yep. So all this crazy technology, he helps implement it. You come up with the idea. <laughs> yeah. <and> it, well, <laughs> collectively we. Collectively. We we uh, we we. we yeah, so he, he gets it done in the restaurant. He keeps the machine going yeah. every day. And um, yeah, he's he's our operations guy, repair guy, IT guy, whatever it takes to get it done. So there you uh, go. yeah, it's uh, he, he's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, thank you very much for taking the time. If you guys want to connect with me, it's at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. We're going to put links to your social. I've heard from your daughter that you guys are going to be launching a TikTok account. Everyone that comes on the show, if you're not active on TikTok, you have to be active on TikTok because this is a show about smartphone storytelling. There's never been greater opportunity for your restaurant or your brand. Uh, so you guys are going to be on TikTok? I, I thought we already started. Yeah, Izzy, 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 Izzy's launched it. So right. Izzy says she's launching it. The TikTok channel, we're going to put a link in the show notes. That's the next, remember what I said, every generation has every to Every generation has go. got to contribute. So this is the next generation. Izzy's already been signed up. She's in the back. Thank you guys so much for, for watching. Please uh, write a review, share this with a friend, and we will see you on Clubhouse. Yeah, awesome. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right Toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about Toast, you implemented Toast, you did a Toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your Toast story with us. DM me today to learn more. And be sure to check out Toast.